Get ready to experience the supernatural. A man's connection to ancestral worship leaves him in a devastating condition. A woman's desire to see her mom alive causes her to make a life-changing agreement. All on today's 700 Club Nigeria. Hello, you are welcome to 700 Club Nigeria. Ethel and I are extremely glad to have you here. Oh yes, we are. Today's package is loaded with stories of supernatural experiences. You know, experiences you can barely explain or make sense of. Uh, you mean those experiences that leave some people afraid or <laughs> skeptical? Well, some people are in awe and excited. Aha, uh -huh. I like <laughs> the excitement part. Okay, so today I can assure you that the true stories you'll see will leave you in no doubt of the truth about the supernatural. So, first up, Priye Omayuku is considered by many to have an extraordinary voice. But as Priye would tell you, that ability came after an unusual experience. See a thousand tongues wouldn't be enough to bless you for all the love you've given to me. I look at the streets and I see people begging. I go to hospitals and I see people sick. A thousand songs came from me. Very grateful heart, like God, even the breath I breathe, you know, is a gift from you. Lord, I owe you all of me. See, you could have been me. Having a heart of praise just makes you a happy person because you can tell and see God's goodness in your life. You know, some people say, ah, nothing is happening for me. I'm just there. You know, my job is just there. Or I don't have a job. Or I'm not in school. I've not passed my exams and all that. But if you just sit down and just think, you know, the fact that I'm alive, you know, is, is a good thing. It means there's hope for me and God has a plan for me. And she said she has seen him work out an awesome plan in her own life. Priya Omayuku is an outstanding gospel artist with a strong musical gift. Yet, Priya says one of the mind-blowing miracles she is always thankful for is the ability to sing. My big sisters loved music and then um, they were split into different parts, soprano, alto, tenor, and they will just start singing Christian songs and I'll just be there mute watching and really, really admiring them, especially my younger sister. I just felt my younger sister had the best voice in the world and I just wanted to be like her. Then one day in school, I saw some senior girls coming into our class. They, they brought a sheet of paper and said, do you know this song? They dropped it on the table. I looked at it and it was um, Greatest Love of All, Whitney Houston. And I said, yes. So I, I now started singing it, you know. I, I finally finished the song and People just started screaming, wow, you have a fantastic voice. Wow, you sound like Whitney Houston. Ah! <laughs> I was like, really me, you know? But seriously, growing up, I didn't think I had a nice voice at all, at all. You know, so that day was like the defining moment. God was like, this is it. You have it in you. Use it. From then on, there was no turning back for her. Priye began to compose songs and even formed choirs. But a life-changing experience compelled Priye to serve God with her musical gift. My mom was involved in an accident and um, it was really a rude shock for us because she was like everything to us. And um, one evening the phone rang and somebody had a message, just a sheet of paper with my mom's name, Martha Angai, was involved in an accident. Dead or alive, we don't know. In the midst of all the uncertainty, Priye made a promise to God. I told God, God, if you save mommy's life, I make you a promise, I will serve you all my life. I'll give my whole life to you. Anything, Lord, you want me to do, I'm going to do, you know. So I made him a promise and um, he also made me a promise that he will never leave me. He'll never forsake me. And then the miraculous happened. God spared the life of Priye's mother. He's a promise keeper. He will never fail. He keeps to his promises. He has never failed. It was really a bad accident. Some major bones were you know, affected, she's alive, she can use her legs. This is, this is the promise. <laughs> Since then, Priye has given her all to serving God. And now she leads the phenomenal choir, she's ministered on television, and has worked with some of the most talented artists and producers in Africa. But for Priye, she is simply a gospel music minister who is determined to bring countless people into the kingdom of God one song at a time. I'm not 
looking for fame. I'm not looking for money, you know. But I love money. <laughs> money answered all things, you know, and all that. But money is not, um, it's not what's driving me. Being popular and being a celebrity is not what's driving me. Why? Because God has put me through a process. I know that um, this gift is not for money. I know this gift is supposed to impact people, change lives, save souls, you know, get people healed, get people delivered from, you know, um, bondages and all that. And from this understanding and many life lessons, this amazing minstrel shares a few insights that can help you excel in life. First thing is um, you have to have Jesus in your life. You need to know him deeper. He's like a father and a child. Search the scripture, know who you are, be confident in who you are, and launch out, and you can be anything you want to be. Lord, I give you all of the praise. See a thousand tongues wouldn't be enough to bless you for. Wow, he truly is a promise keeper. Brian, can you see how God just turned the situation around? Where there would have been mourning, God turned it into joy and dancing. It just goes to show that he is supreme and knows the end of a thing from the beginning. Very true. You know, God is a covenant-keeping God, and I don't think he plans on changing. Imagine God saying, you know what? I'm tired of being God, so Barine, you take over. Barine, that is <laughs> such a horrible thought that I'm so happy it will never happen. I'm so <laughs> grateful that our God is dependable. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the unchangeable nature of God, here is a story of a man whose family was deep in ancestral worship, but he encounters a power greater than any other. She would send spirits to cause that person to, be, to become sick and die. Simon Halele is referring to his grandmother, who taught him about witchcraft. She would form humans out of the clay and tell me, son, somebody wants to remove someone. So we are going to form that person that needs to be re removed. They used to practice the, the worship of ancestors, which involves the killing of animals, the drinking of the hot blood as the animal dies. Then we were told that the forefathers who have passed away, they will give you protection uh, and they will help you in troubles. Simon's family had been involved in ancestor worship for several generations. Through the years, they used their power to curse their enemies, and their adversaries retaliated. We were enemies with another family, and I had a dream whereby that particular person from the other group was giving me food. When Simon woke up the next morning, he felt sick. It began in my stomach and I, I really became sick, and then it grew, it grew, it grew, and then I, I became worse. Every time Simon tried to eat, he would vomit. His body was in pain, and he was extremely weak. However, the real torment came when he went to sleep. I would dream of coffins, dead people, you know, dogs eating my flesh. I would be tormented in my soul mentally tormented and body-wise, I'm under torment, pain. His family took him to the medical doctor, but he couldn't find anything wrong with him. But I know for real that something was moving inside of my stomach. It was bad. And I remember this particular day where my younger brother uh, found me with a knife in my hand. I wanted to open wherever I could feel that this thing is moving because I had in mind that if I can just cut my flesh and open, I will see this thing and then take it out. It's, it's tormenting me. Simon's family called on the ancestors for his healing. They tried every ritual they knew, but he didn't get better. There was no more hope. Uh, even my mom told me, uh, we, we, we gave up on you and we were just waiting to come where you, you used to lie down in the house and then find your day. Another villager, who was a Christian, asked Simon's family if he could take him to a crusade his church was having for prayer. Out of desperation, his family allowed him to go. Simon was so weak, he had to be taken there in a wheelbarrow. The crusade was about um, two weeks. The first week, there was this particular day that 
when the pastor uh, prayed for me after service, I began to throw out. And I, this big roll of a black hair came out. Then immediately from that day, I began to be well. Gradually, he began getting better. Simon wanted to know more about this person that healed him. He began asking his Christian friend more about Jesus. I was very moved that every time I would say, in the name of Jesus, and every time I would, I would go back home and then they would find me in the house saying, in the name of Jesus, in the name, and then I began to fall in love with this name Jesus within me. His family noticed his interest in Jesus growing and gave him a strong warning. They would tell me, hey, be careful. You were just going there to get your healing, not to follow them or do what they are doing. Uh, because what you don't know, those people are uh, also against our ancestors. Simon ignored the family's warning and would sneak to the city to attend church. One day, he made a decision. I stood and went in front and then raised my hands and like Jesus come in my heart, forgive all my sins, and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I broke down in tears, and then I began to really cry, not because of my sins, but because of his forgiveness on me, his love. I could literally feel the love of God. Simon's decision to follow Jesus came at a cost. He was beaten, renounced from his family, and told the ancestors would kill him if he didn't turn from Jesus. Simon was forced to leave his home. A pastor in the city took him in. It was a struggle in my heart. It was a struggle mentally. It, it's, my, my, my Christian life in the early years was not easy. There are times that my flesh would speak, what are you doing? Are you sure you are living with strangers just because of this Jesus and you, you, you no more see your family, your relative, and you, you left your mom. And there was a time that I came home and I found her leg broken. I asked her, what happened? She said, your father beat me because of you. So, so you can imagine. Sometimes it was not easy for me. So my life was being pulled by two powers, two choices two kingdoms, the, 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 the God of the universe and the God of darkness. I would go and cry to God and then he would console my inner being. Simon continued to serve Jesus and eventually he became a pastor. Through Simon's ministry, God has done miraculous things, including raising a man from the dead. Local television and radio stations broadcasted what happened. And when news got back to his village, many began giving their hearts to Jesus, including Simon's mother. She said, that's what motivated her, because she told me I was waiting to see if God can really protect you from our gods. But now, I mean, your life is becoming the best of what I never thought. So I'm choosing this God. My father confessed, he said, when I heard that you raised a dead man and I saw you all over, then I knew that your God is real. Simon's father apologized for the way he treated him. He is planning to visit Simon's church. Simon is praying and believing for his father's salvation. He is also starting a new legacy. I'm the first to have a blessed family. I'm the first in everything. And it has gone on and on and on, and nothing they uttered against me has ever succeeded. I grew up seeing the, the side of the supernatural, which is witchcraft, but I never knew that there's a higher reality, which I live in now, the one that I found higher than all powers, which is the power of God. We call him mighty, all mighty. All power is him. 
You know, as Africans, it's easy to believe in the supernatural. Our ancestors recognized that there was more to life than the eyes can see. They knew that the spiritual was more powerful than the physical, and that's what led to the worship of idols and ancestors, a relationship that is based on fear and painful sacrifices that never gave peace or the assurance of favor or safety. If only they knew what we now know, that there is one great God who is love, who is far, far above all idols and spirits, and who is powerful enough to protect us from them. The Bible says that Jesus is seated far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. He is our helper, our protector, our provider, our healer. Simon heard and believed. He trusted God and now he has become a light, helping his family out of bondage, affliction and obscurity because he received Jesus, the true light of the world. My friend, are you living a life you don't understand? Are things you can't control just happening to you? Do you have to do things against your will just to get by? You need Jesus. Jesus alone can help you live in that higher reality that Simon talked about. Jesus died on a cross so that you can become a child of God and be the best of what people never thought you could be. But you have to choose and demonstrate that choice by saying a prayer, which you can say with me right now, repenting of your sin and asking Jesus to take over your life. Do you want to say that prayer now? You could just bow your head and repeat after me. Say, Dear God, I believe that you are the one true God that Jesus is your son, through whom I have forgiveness for my sins. I repent of everything that I have done against your will. Lord Jesus, come into my life. I enthrone you as Lord, and I believe that you will protect me from that which has always made me afraid. You know, Lord, what I have been going through. But today, I choose to trust you. I give my life to you. And I declare that I am a born again child of God, even as you promised. In Jesus' name, amen. Up ahead, the heartwarming story of an orphan boy whose life was transformed in ways he never would have imagined. In the village of Kaida, Nigeria, people believe that if a woman dies during childbirth, her baby is cursed. When villagers bury the mother, they kill the baby, wrap it within the burial shroud, and bury the newborn infant with a mother's lifeless corpse. Miracle's mother died during childbirth, but before he was killed, a missionary rescued him to be raised by Pastor Shola and his wife, Gloria. When we first saw Miracle, we didn't know if he would survive more than a few days. He was very sick and malnourished. That's how practically all of our children have come to us. Over the years, Shola and Gloria took in dozens of children. They all lived together in a very small home they rented. In this home, Miracle and the other children are safe and will grow up knowing they are loved and accepted. Miracle remembers the day they moved into their new house. When the kids aren't studying, they love to play outside. We knew the soccer ball they had was old, so we gave them a new one. Many of the children here would have been killed over tribal superstitions, but thanks to Gloria and Shola and the help of Orphan's Promise, these kids can live each day knowing they have a hope for the future. Each of their lives is a miracle. And that is what you, our 700 Club partners, do. You give orphans the reason to smile, to believe, and to hope for a better future. 
With your contributions as a 700 Club partner, you make it possible for us to do what we do. And for that, we say thank you. If you'd like to be the reason for a child's smile today, then come on board. Become a 700 Club partner today. Just visit our website and fill out our form. And give us a call if you prefer, and we'll be honored to tell you more. Still to come, Priye Omayuku's beautiful song on the covenant-keeping nature of our God, right here on 700 Club Nigeria. Hi, my name is Faith. My name is Uchi. My name is Obina. Julie. Susan. Mali. I'm an accountant. I am a chemist. I'm a surveyor. I am a mother and an entrepreneur, and I'm a member of the 700 Club. Looking around my environment, I see a lot of people in need. Some die from waterborne diseases, lack of basic health care, complications from childbirth, and so much more. And when I follow the news, I see many more of those in need. I long to help these precious people. But there's so much that one person can do. But when I join other people who care, there is no limit to what we can do to put smiles on the faces of the needy around us. That is why I joined the 700 Club. People who care. Now we can break the circle of poverty by empowering the poor and giving them hope. Please join me on the 700 Club team. Together. Together, we can change our world. One life at a time. Let's make a difference. Become a 700 Club member today. Today's episode has been a refreshing one with stories like that of the orphan whose hope was restored and Simon whose supernatural healing started a chain reaction of events. Not to forget that of Priye using her voice to draw men to God because of her encounter with the promise-keeping God. Sad to say, but our time is almost up and we have to bring the program to a close. Nevertheless, we implore you to open your heart daily to the wonder-working power of God. We would love to hear from you, so feel free to give us a call, send us a mail, or leave us a comment on any of our social media platforms. And if you would like us to pray with you or counsel with you, we are just a call away. Until next time, we'll leave you with this wonderful song by Priyo Omayuko titled, Promise Keeper. Bye-bye and God bless you. bless you. I read it in the Bible books, I see it everywhere I look. That you never fail Age to age is still the same I heard it on the radio I saw it on the TV show That you never fail That you can never fail I read it in the Bible book I see it everywhere I look That you never fail Age to age is still the same Promise keep Your love will fade away.
Guarantee you never fail. Promise. 